Angie. I'm Sunny. I'm Randy, and this is Bourbon Wine and True Crime, a podcast where three kind but eternally enraged friends sit down once a week to drink together virtually and discuss true crime. And because it's spooky season, we're doing spooky stories. Hello, mm-hmm. ladies. Hello. Hello. Or bonjour. <laughs> oh, bonjour. That's the only bonjour. French word I know. I know why are we. you speaking France? Why are you speaking in French? Well, why am I speaking in France? Well, in France, that yeah. is because I just got back from Europe yesterday. Yes. And although it's all it's all flown out of my head now, I actually learned how to like order coffee appropriately what? in French and in Dutch. And yeah, wow. it was it was very exciting. It was like, you know, bonjour, mademoiselle. Uh, un, uh, un café, or yeah, un café élongé, s'il vous plaît. Ooh, and then just like, I like mine élongé. <laughs> oh, you know. Wow. Then, <laughs> that's sexy. Well, that's got to be really cool for you because your, your genealogy is Dutch, isn't it? It is. It was very exciting because um, I got mistaken to be like for for being Dutch multiple times. There's a lot of sort of um, blustery, curly haired people around. In oh, you fit in quite well <laughs> in Holland, <laughs> and apparently, uh, apparently that's that's what it's about. So I thought when I first met you, I thought that was a, a really cool thing. You were we were it was like the fall, and then we were moving into Christmas, and you're like, yeah, we put out like shoes and we wait for Sinter Claus and I was like what the hell is Sinter Claus and that was like my first exposure to that that was really cool so my mom's friend hair who okay my favorite thing is like it looks like he's Albert Einstein but he's been on a bicycle in a like a tornado for like a while and so I say that he has hair instead of having hair (laughs) but um he was telling me that we need to do do more for Sinterklaas because like apparently you're supposed to play pranks on people um when you give gifts to people they're supposed to be disguised as something else um you're also supposed to exchange books and like there's Whoa. all this stuff yeah. and yeah. I was like yes yes don't, go on go on don't the Dutch people have that skeleton horse that comes in you have to like rap battle it yeah, I'm gonna look um, it up real quick. Rap battle? It's I cannot say that that has been part of my family it's, tradition. <laughs> it's like a poetry battle. It's a, you know, it's Europe, oh. so it's a very old. Um, okay, like a war of words. Yes, I'm looking it up right now. I'm sorry, um, Sunny. I was just like, do you have this? No, first? but I'm oh. I'm very excited because uh, we are having a rare episode where it is going to be my and I say cases very loosely. Uh, cases oh. in quotation um and all of mine are going to be based off of the places that I was so I'm very excited about it I'm very excited let's let's take a true crime um current Great. event really quick oh did you see that Adnan Syed has been released yes and his conviction yes. overturned today yes. after 23 years like I I don't know how I feel about it because I don't, I don't know. know either. Honestly, well, I, I, I'm like a 60, 40. I'm a I 60, just think 40 it's so, split. But what, like, as you were listening to it, I swear it was like, when you were listening to the serial, it was like mm-hmm. every episode you're like, oh, well it's cause he's innocent. And because obviously, and then the next one, you're like, nope, nope, he did it. Nope. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> but poor, that poor girl's family though, to have to go. I like, know, yeah either they think that he did it and they think he was released erroneously or her killer is still out there. Yeah. Either way, there's, there's no peace. They might've had a little bit of peace, but now there's no peace. Yeah. And he does. So are they, is he going back to trial? Cause that hasn't hmm. been said all I, I, uh, Paul and I were talking about this earlier. Um, like since he's been overturned, but he could still be retried. They could still, you know, the charges haven't been dropped. So the, for lack of a better pun, the jury is still out. Yeah. I mean, you know? if it was, if his nationality was different, mm-hmm. I would probably feel more strongly, but just cause there was, it seemed like there was a lot of racial undertones to it. Oh, there I, was. Sure. And so I'm just like, ah, oh, I just, but is, 
because you got the guy that saw the body in his trunk, the the one witness. And I'm like, ah, oh, I don't know. I like I'm a 60 40. Like I'm like, he's maintained his innocence. He's been very strong in that conviction. He hasn't have, he hasn't wavered. And then you've got like it's a strong 40. It's a yeah. strong 40. I can't go a 50 50 split, but I can do a strong 60 40. And it's still it's very tense. I don't know. I am agnostic on that <laughs> particular case. <laughs> I am a Dr. Pepper on the back, the beverage spectrum spectrum on that case. Agnostic beverages only. Agnostic um, beverages only. Speaking of beverages, so fun fact about Holland is that um you cannot order water anywhere no one drinks water <laughs> i would there die no water, but there is a lot of beer so they will bring you a beer immediately you can ask for water 800 times they'll look at you funny <laughs> no one will bring you water my mother was very <laughs> upset i was very happy so um in the spirit of halloween i do not have a um a dutch beer with me but i do have dogfish heads pumpkin ale which i'm very oh, excited about because very it's Halloween exciting theme. i um, love that and if you guys are are cool with that i am getting ready to dive into well our... let's see what randy what are you drinking her what do you got going on over there vet i have a guess okay it's vodka <laughs> it's a little bit of vodka. it's vodka it's vodka what, what you drinking aj I got my witchy cup again because we're love doing it. spooky season and spooky. this is we normally um we created the summer jam right so now it's the final days of summer we're summer moving jam. into fall fall is just all sorts of ghosts and halloween and I love it so this is a pinot grigio with a splash of um diet seven up and a vodka floater <sighs> I call this my fall fiesta Ooh. <laughs> love it yeah. Well, so today we're going to have a, uh, like, sort of like a charcuterie board of okay. um, Dutch and French excitement. Uh, I'd love to say you'll enjoy my case, but um, as always, there's a smorgasbord, if you will, of, of uh, different things that are going to be going on. I do promise all of it is crime and spooky related. Um, and I am going to be discussing Amsterdam first because that is the first place that I visited. So I thought we'd start out by um, hearing a little bit about things that are illegal. What are crimes in Amsterdam after all? That's a good um, question. It's, it's a great question. Yeah. Well, so fun fact, drugs are super illegal there, <laughs> including pot, including what? pot. Yeah. Um, but so it's I'm a so disappointed in the, I know. the crime in the Netherlands um, to buy cannabis off the street. It, you can only buy it in a coffee shop, but it's still technically considered illegal. But but they will not charge you if you buy or have on you up to five grams. That's what the loophole is. Is that okay. a lot? Um, yes. I that actually don't know. <laughs> that's but, a lot. Uh, but that's quite a lot. Apparently, they say drugs are illegal, but nothing will happen to you if you sell or have or anything that happens with five grams, hmm. it, which context, is actually if you come into the state of Texas with any anything over one gram, that's a felony oh. under one gram is a misdemeanor. So there's your kind of measuring stick. Five okay. grams is a lot. Um, so we're going to hear a little bit about things that are criminal or not in the yes. Netherlands. So um, these are these are my favorites, and one of them was that it is a crime to buy cannabis because that's usually surprising. Um, so it is against the Dutch law to urinate in a canal, but it is acceptable if you're pregnant. Oh, I, I like that. that. I appreciate that. I can mm -hmm. get behind that. As a formerly pregnant person, you have to pee mm -hmm. when you have to. Pee. You have to pee, so you can yep. pee in the canal if you're pregnant. It is. Ma'am, why are you peeing? I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. Um, and they're like, are, I'm just oh, not look showing. Pregnant. Well, I I'm just be. not showing. I'm <laughs> pregnant with emotion. I'm pregnant. Ma'am, you're drunk. Okay. <laughs> and it is also illegal for more than three single people to share a house. Um, it's <laughs> so this is actually the reason being is it's an attempt to stop house sharing, which is also illegal so you can't like have roommates you can only live with family what? but this is as opposed to texas where if you have more than two women sharing a house it's considered a brothel 
Yeah. Um, that's, that's also a thing I've, I was listening to morbid and they're from uh, Boston. And I guess if you have more than five people in a house it's considered a brothel. So they won't put a yeah. six person on the lease. Yep. So, um, but something that's cool and legal in, in the Netherlands is prostitution is legal, which yes, means that they, they, um, they are required to pay taxes. Oh, there the it Netherlands. is. And yeah. have health care, I hope. And have health care. Yes. And, and all sorts of rights. And it's, yeah. it's really, it's and be really recognized great. as an employed person. Report um, to police. So some of these are funny and some of them are not, but uh, euthanasia is legal in the Netherlands for ages up to one year and older than 12 years. Um, children's groups are also pushing to extend the law to cover ages one through 12 years. Ooh, okay, I have to stop. Don't, don't like that. Well, I, like, I have com- this, like I have a stupid compassionate question. deaths, like that kind okay. of thing. So if you have like terminal illness and things like that, it's not like, hey, you're annoying. <laughs> Which well, that, maybe that's why they've excluded ages I mean, kids, 12. kids are in such a delicate mental state, especially stuff like I would have mm-hmm. with my childhood grown up. They're like, hey, you can just end this. I'd be like, let's fucking go. So, yes. but I guess if it's a like it's you have like a terminal illness, like oh, that okay. type of thing. Yeah. So it's like the the um like the compassionate euthanasia that I they see. have in some places. Yeah. Um, so it is uh illegal to lock a burglar in your toilet that's a that is a law in the netherlands that is very specific yep so if you lock them in the pantry all good you cannot lock them in the toilet toilet. and i would rather be locked in the toilet because if i'm going to be locked away somewhere i'm going to eventually have to use the potty like i would like please lock me in the potty apparently you cannot do that i would not argue with the pantry too because there's food and well, divorce is legal. Even if you divorce someone, you cannot divorce your in-laws. You're married to them forever. No. Oh, fuck that. Bye. Ab- absolutely <laughs> not. Absolutely not. Hard pass. Noping that away. Wait, so mm-hmm. what is what is that? In t- it means that they're your family forever. Are you, also, are you like responsible yeah. for them? Yeah. Probably. So there's also all these other laws of where you, it's like illegal to refuse to like lend money to a family member. There's all this stuff. I didn't go into all that because I just picked my favorites, but there's some really interesting laws. And so you have in-laws forever. You're welcome. Guten Tag. <laughs> be careful. Be careful. Be careful. That would stop yes. me from getting married ever. Like yeah. you're cool. I see some things with your family that I don't want to be tied to you for the rest of eternity. So we should just we should just casually date. So, um, yeah, so these, those are things that are legal and illegal in Amsterdam. And next we are going to move into our, um, you know, our, our aged cheese or a different section of the charcuterie. And we're going to go with a few Dutch headlines that I really enjoyed. So, uh, the first one is Dutch police arrested a bird for its part in a robbery. (laughs) Is there a picture of bird handcuffs? Um, okay, but so I will uh, send this picture to you guys. But um, please, I need. Can you yeah. send it now? I need to see this, please. Oh well, give a second. So, uh, so according to police, this is a direct quote. During the arrest, we found a sneaky witness with feathers and beak on the shoplifting subject suspect's shoulder. Um, and so while initially reporting on the bird's arrest, the news organization, RTV Utrecht, blurred out the bird's eyes to keep his identity private. That is so precious. <laughs> and uh, just so you know kind of how it ended up, and unfortunately I couldn't get more than this, the bird had not made a plea in the case, but with all the media attention, um, it's, it's getting pressured to make a move in, in coming days. So, oh, Randy, you have birds. If you, if your <laughs> birds were going to be arrested for anything, what would Lily or the other, uh, your other birdies be arrested for? What, what would they do that you would arrest them? Well, Lily's a brat. I think she'd be arrested for assault. <laughs> yes. And then Henry, Henry, when he was still Henry. around, he was such a grumpy old man. I think he would they'd be arrested for like throwing water balloons at kids that are on his lawn. Yes. <laughs> water balloons full of spit so you know what maybe that maybe that dutch bird deserved it maybe that dutch bird was like yo i did it what are you gonna do huh throw me in the can 
Hmm, I've already been in the cage. You can't fool me. The Dutch bird has, Dutch bird has a 1920s American accent. <laughs> <laughs> What's you going to do to me, Kappa? What are you going to do to me, huh? <laughs> so it does. Um, it migrated. <laughs> fun fact: one of my one of my son's favorite uh, books or book series has to do with this pigeon, and I've given it like a "I'm walking here" kind of a, <laughs> an accent. Mm-hmm. So. It's like yelling yep. about not want, wanting to go to bed. And it sounds Aww. like it's some sort of angry New Yorker. Um, <laughs> quick si- really quick side note. One way I could always make uh, my son laugh in the car with, I, I would always make voices for the birds that were like on the like telephone phones and stuff. I'd <laughs> oh, be like, I yes. want that French fry. Marty, you had to stop and ask for directions. Now we're <laughs> lost in El Paso, Texas. Where the hell are you taking me? And he just would just laugh hysterically. It was one of my favorite things to do. Anyway. That is so cute. Um, okay, okay, so I I went from um, goofy to slightly less goofy. So this one was just interesting. It's relatives moved at least nine graves after seance in Lewiston Cemetery. So um the, the reason why I picked this was not necessarily because of the headline, but because of a quote in it. Um, so apparently th- there were these seances being held in this graveyard where a lot of children were buried. And it only came to light when a parent found a video camera that was forgotten amongst the children's graves that showed these seance activities going on. Oh, that's um, alarming. And... So I guess when the the mayor had had been part of the investigation, they talked to the cemetery's director who had given the group permission to investigate the energy of dead people outside of the cemetery's opening hours. And my favorite part was just the ending of this article where it was concluded that the cemetery director should have never allowed the seances. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for that Cracker Jack reporting. Just stellar. Really, really excellent. They dug up excellent nine investigation. bodies. Uh, yeah, they moved yeah. nine bodies like out of the cemetery because is, they were it, conducting these seances on children's graves. Is it the same thing how it is here? How the bodies have to be buried six feet under? Because that's a I lot of don't know. That's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And also literally insane to move dead. I don't know, it's, for me it's worse that it's kids you're moving dead yeah. kids yeah it's nope. not it's not great it's not great it sounds gushy it's not great. um like sounds moist it's <laughs> stop it a little damp a little damp <laughs> um so this this was also a excellent headline dutch family waiting for end of time found in secret room oh my god can we not go there <laughs> Found dead? No. Nope. Found waiting. Just waiting. Just, just like I'm, how long had they been waiting? Are you are you ready? No. So sure. a man of age 58 and six young adults aged 18 to 25 were found living at a farm. Um, the family was found after this is like the way that this happened. So the family was found after the eldest ordered a beer at a bar in a nearby village who uh, he, he ordered five beers in a row, drank them, and then told the staff he needed help. I think I've heard this. This is ringing a bell. So keep going, um, keep going. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So apparently that like this, this oldest son kind of like he, he, yeah. So he drank, he drank five, but apparently he like had when he came in, he had long hair, a dirty beard, wore mm-hmm. old clothes, looked confused. Um, he said he'd never been to school and hadn't been to the barber for nine years. So I guess he like kind of escaped. I don't know how nobody notices with that small of a little community, but I love that the first thing he did, he did not immediately go, excuse me, I need help. He's like, I would like five beers, please. Slams Well, they're down. not He's serving like, water, so. And they're not. <laughs> 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 what else do you order i want five waters no okay five beers yeah he would have been waiting also until the end of time yeah. for five waters. if that might have taken longer <laughs> um so when they went they found six people living in a small space in the house 
which could be locked, but it wasn't like a basement exactly. Um, it wasn't clear whether they had been there voluntarily, but apparently the family had been living in isolation waiting for the end of time. For how long? Uh, unclear. Um, all they know is they arrested the 58 year old man. He was under investigation. He refused to cooperate. And all of the adults were found in similar fashion as the eldest who had gone to the bar. Oh no. Did y'all yes. ever keep, keep track of the, it was in Germany, the man who kept his daughter in the basement and he fathered like nine children incestually mm-hmm. with her. They're yes. like, he's up for parole to be let out. Like for keeping nope. his, yeah. Like he, he's, his case can go to the parole board now. Like that's just what it reminds me of. Like this old white guy keeping these like young people like in a basement and like, it's going to be the end of times. And he's yeah. going to, he, he's going to get the sunny, like, don't do that. Nope. Kept, nope. Mm. Yeah. You can't, kept, you can't keep people. Kept his six against children. Their yeah. Against he's going to get, well. get a slap on the hand. You always, Ridiculous. I hear stuff like that and I'm like, that's so crazy. And then I think about the uh the Heaven's Gate cult that was here mm-hmm. in somewhere in the US, where this couple convinced a group of people that the end of days was coming and they all just killed themselves. Yep. That's a freaky case. That's a we gotta cover that sometime. I gotta write that down. Anyway. And so those poor people, that's what probably half of the because he said he hadn't been to a barber in nine years and there was an nine eight, years. There's an 18 year old to probably half of their life at least. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it sounds like it maybe was for nine years. Gee, at so, least. But like also, on a good day. Also, I, so I love you two. I could not be stuck in a room with you two 24 seven, seven days a week, 365 for nine years. No. That's. But why? <laughs> <laughs> We're so agreeable. No, you we are, so agreeable. But, but I need to be away from, yeah, like, like you, can you imagine, like, I know it's this with relationships and me and Ernest are still early on in ours. So I'm still getting used to it, but like you go to sleep and you see somebody and you wake up and you see them, but then there isn't that break in between like where he's at work and I'm at work and we're off doing our own things. It's just 24 seven, just what you doing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the turf in 13. I want to cover that case too. Ooh. Thirteen. Well, um, I'm going to bring bring it. I'm going to bring okay. us back up a little bit and bring yep. up, bring okay. us back up. Okay. Uh, the the final headline for this uh, aged cheese section is Dutch sunbathers should keep on their toes. So a uh, a police spokesman said a man had been detained after women sunning themselves in Rotterdam's parks and beaches claimed he had snuck up on them and begun to lick their toes. Ugh. Oh, no, 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 mm-hmm. no, no. Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. okay. So no, but wait, but wait, it gets better. Ugh. Hang on. <laughs> Are you ready? Um, the officers had to let him go. Licking a stranger's toes is rather unusual, but there's really nothing criminal about it. The spokesman said <laughs> it's assault. <laughs> That's assault. Oh, my toes are like curled in my my... too. (laughs) I just like put my feet under my legs. Like, nope. Nope. Um, so this is this is my favorite part is that don't worry, there was someone who got angry about it. Peter Van Himst, a labor member of parliament, asked Christian Democrat Justice Minister. Pete Heindonner to explain why Dutch laws forbid littering, but not uninvited toe licking. Then Heems demanded an amendment prohibiting it. I demand it. I demand it. I'm picturing. I am Peter Van Heems. I'm picturing I don't the way think our, I can ever uncurl my toes. I know. I'm picturing our political system, which is just a complete dumpster fire. And instead of just being like, hey, you cannot in any way touch somebody without their consent if they're not in danger, if they're not harming you, you know, whatever, whatever. And they're just like, you cannot lick toes from 9 a.m. Really to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday to people on the beach in this park. Like, no, 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 just say, just, just say don't touch people. Just 
just you just don't just don't touch anybody it'll be great oh just don't. that's so i have i have a new fear i have a new fear thank <laughs> you for you're new unlocking thank you you're new welcome. fear unlocked a new fear unlocked level up oh well, level up Sunny's so sitting here like, oh, the, 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 the charcuterie board. And I was like, man, I've been eating today. I'm hungry. And you said that. And I was like, I'm actually nauseous. Not hungry you know what? anymore. I'm good. Thanks. Thanks. I'm good. Thanks. Thanks. You know, uh, you're welcome. Little Vienna sausages. Me, 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 me. Moving on. <laughs> What's next on the charcuterie board? Is there any salami? Is there a, we a have... sausage? Some pepperoni? Oh, I don't know. Don't worry, baby. I've got some sausage for you later. You got some sausage? You got some sausage. But for the moment, we're going to do one really, 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 really shallow historical dive related to some art that I saw. Awesome. Um, Here for it. Move. Yep. Yes. Um, so there is a um, there is a, a drawing that was done by Rembrandt. So I don't know if you guys are I'm sure you're familiar with Rembrandt, but for any of our listeners that are not um, very famous artists. And so um, he had done this sketch that is, and I don't worry, I will include it. You guys will be able to see it, um, of a, a young woman. And when you look at it, she looks, I don't know, it's, it's really disturbing to look at, but um, her name was Elsie Christians. I'm Googling it. And she was an 18 year old woman from Jutland, uh, executed on May 1st, 1664, Mm -hmm. just two weeks after her arrival in Amsterdam in April of that year, she got into a violent argument over unpaid rent. And then Elsie hit her landlady over the head with an ax and knocked her down the cellar stairs. So in, in that time, doing something like that is immediately going to have you put to death, often via hanging. So she was exposed to her viewers on the gibbet in the gallows Ooh. field outside of Amsterdam, along Ooh. with the axe. Is that it? Instrument of her, yes, along with the instrument of her crime. Oh. And so Rembrandt went to this viewing and ended up doing a sketch of her, which is the one that you're looking at, oh. which is really haunting. Did they say how old she was? 18. 18. <gasps> 18 years old. That so is, uh, we'll have to stitch that into the uh the video and we'll post it on the social media. That is haunting. Mm-hmm. So Elsie Christians, it just reminded me of, you know, it's it was a really different time and just it was in I but I suppose in the way that we have the same kind of morbid curiosity they just mm-hmm. instead of podcast they had you know uh public hanging public I, don't know if that's quite the, mm-hmm. I don't know if that's quite the same no. thing but yeah um it was it just we're not really even we're not even a hundred years from removed from our last no. public execution in the states like it's it's a very that that's like a a reality tv show that everybody could go watch at the time and that picture like she reminds me randy and i know you've listened to the morbid jack the ripper like it reminds me of like this young girl that is just a victim of her circumstance Mm -hmm. and she's being just annihilated in the public because she's a woman she's young she like she can't pay her rent i can't pay the rent no i can't pay the rent and so she it just she tries to survive. Of... It's just it's it's very very tragic, and it, it 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 just echoes that like Jack the Ripper yeah kind of like f- picture. I mean, I know that one of the I'm a I'm a learned college student now. Me and my GED, um, but my son the science class that I was taking. One of the things that they say is you can't judge the past based on what we know now because our reality has changed. You know, it is. But with this, it's just, there's little, it seems so unnecessary that the ax is with her. Mm-hmm. It's like, what was the, I, again, I'm not, hindsight's 2020. We know that that's really shitty now, but you're, you're hanging this just very young, almost a child. It, the ax just seems like, an, I don't know. It's very dark to me. Very dark. But I think that she, you know, she has been you know, eternally memorialized in this very famous sketch. And so no um, one knows what the landlord looks like. No one knows what the landlord looks like. Um, But I, I, we saw so 
many she was strangled at a pieces. garage oh that's a violent so, yes um i i loved your penis bite personally that you saw like that oh, was a work in, of art. in the red light Spe- district speaking yes. of Rembrandt and speaking of art like the penis bike you took pictures that of was like some art right you there. didn't buy that you didn't bring that home or we needed one penis. Uh, it didn't fit one you didn't bring one, didn't, didn't bring one penis home the penis we, we thought the about it we, we need to in the red light district for a while <laughs> we'll we'll put the picture on the uh on the socials just so everyone knows yes, not that'll insane. Be there. it's literally this like old 1950s bike that is just covered in pink dildos in and it's big. fantastic it's marvelous it's just it's amazing it's uh it's pretty darn i wonder if you orgasm when you write it uh i don't yeah they didn't have one in the most appropriate spot that i would have guessed but uh <laughs> you know i'm not gonna it's ride the for wheel safety Okay. It's for safety. It, it keeps, keeps you, you securely. On, keeps you on the bike. On the bike. Yeah. Can you imagine? Okay. We would be fitness gurus. It was just like, hey, <laughs> we added a feature to the Peloton. <laughs> Babe, you're working out hey, seven Peloton hours. Fam. Trademark that. Trademark. 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 Tim, trademark. Tim, trademark. Tim, trademark. Tim, Tim, trademark. Tim, 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 Tim. That's our Babe. next million dollar idea, Randy. Babe, you're working out seven yeah. hours a day. I'm just really committed to my fitness journey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you want to have sex? No, I'm good. No, thanks though. I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh God. Okay, All right, that. So that's our um, that's our mark. That's our next commercial. That's our first commercial right there. It's our own product. It's <laughs> <laughs> it's just badly hot glued to the seat. <laughs> Can order your own color and size. Duct tapes. Duct tape time. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you like them thin or girthy oh do you want purple God. or sparkles what do you oh want? right okay all right <laughs> so that that ends our our foray into amsterdam um and we are going to take a little dive into france oh hmm. parlez-vous Bonjour. français do you speak parlez-vous france français? <laughs> No, no, I don't remember now. It's gone. It's gone. It's all gone. All I have um, in my head is from Beauty and the Beast when they're like, bonjour, 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 bonjour. bonjour, bonjour. bonjour. Okay, there I she kept goes, singing that. The girl with the basket. Like, that's all I have I in kept my head. singing that in my head as I was walking around Paris. And I was like, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. <laughs> bonjour. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> bonjour. Bonjour, bonjour, bonjour. Do you ever see the meme where, you know, in the Beauty and the Beast, where it's like, there goes the baker with his tray, like always. And then the baker's like, there goes Belle with her mean song about us every single day. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that one. That's good. Yeah, thanks for making fun of my bread, bitch. Your <laughs> buns are so hot. Yeah. Okay, so God, I figured... I figured we were, we would start our journey into France um, in the same way that we entered into the Netherlands by talking about some things that are legal and illegal in France. Oh, okay. Yes. So um, the first thing that is very important to know if you go to France is against the law is uh, snails must have their own ticket on French trains. I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry. Um, yeah come again yes so uh if any snails are going on to uh french trains they have to have their own ticket does it have a first and last name that that part i i did not get it is it, it like it was, was, was kind of slimy over the t- i couldn't tell <laughs> what it said that is a monsieur snail monsieur has cargo <laughs> I did eat snails while I was over there. Did you like them? Yeah, I love snails. Did you use the pretty woman line, slippery little suckers? I did not. Missed because opportunity. Missed opportunity. <laughs> okay, so I'm about to disclose something that may end <gasps> this episode. <gasps> Do not say it. Don't say it. Don't say I, it. Don't Sonya. say it. Don't say it. Have not seen pretty woman. <laughs> this whole friendship's a lie. <laughs> I don't even know who you are anymore. I can't oh. even look at you right now. I am I'm embarrassed sorry. for you. I, I I don't even know who you are. Well, you know I'm what we're sorry. doing for Christmas. Oh my god. Oh, uh, god. Pretty, pretty woman. Me 
redeeming redeeming question have you seen princess bride well obviously that okay. i've seen 10 bajillion okay. times okay okay we're 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 reestablishing we're rebuilding the trust in the friendship we're repairing Sorry, the foundation but, um but like carrie ooze always always yeah <laughs> there's too many vowels and a w there's a lot of <laughs> lot of lot of letters There's a lot going on there <laughs> a lot going on with that name um it is also illegal to name your pig napoleon so <laughs> <laughs> uh it's illegal in france to it's name illegal your in pig france napoleon. To name your pig napoleon not your not your pet that that no, is pig. reason pig. enough for that is reason enough for me right there i'd be like oh look at this beautiful piglet she's a girl napoleon napoleon <laughs> come right there come, come, at me. come at me french police come at me in fact all of your siblings napoleon napoleon every first napoleon one yeah <laughs> <laughs> Un, deux, <trois. laughs> you're just on your can you imagine you get arrested for that and you're on like the newspapers like local woman names her pig napoleon you're just on the front page like flipping off the cameras like i, I like, said bird, what i said bird, bird witnesses it but it's <laughs> not speaking he didn't have a ticket Blurred. for the smell though oh my god oh. okay so um you're not allowed to kiss in a french train station that's illegal i feel uh, like that doesn't get observed I, I don't know. It is a formal law. You cannot kiss in a French train station. Okay, so this was an excellent one. I feel like that would it, be the best train station to kiss in is a French train station. I don't know. I mean, uh, a French kiss in a French train station? Why wouldn't you go for that? I would think that would be the excuse for kissing everywhere. In I mean, it's French. It, it is, but you can't. No. No. You must that's nope. very disappointing. Um, and then, so I enjoyed this particular law. Um, it actually is a thing that is legal. You can divorce your husband if he watches too much football. Oh, I, I'm offended. Mm-hmm. I like football. Um, oh, wait, is it just so your husband, not your wife? So are you ready? Are you ready? Yes. It's, no. um, so in France, you can divorce your partner on grounds of infidelity, but there's a thing called intellectual infidelity. If your spouse spends too many hours watching games on the tube, you can call it quits for intellectual infidelity. Uh, yes. Okay. I can, yes, I can see the progression there. Yes. I, I, I can, yes. I can get behind that. I can get behind that on. It's a slippery slope, but. I think that it has some forward moving um, promise. It's How long has that been a law? Do you know? I do not. It's just because if those... that was like, like four years, five years, like, but if that was like a 70 year, like law, like where are we balancing? But it's just weird that all these are so specific where I could I, see. This is my favorite yeah. thing. Where it's it, my favorite thing. Your part. Like, could you be is... divorced for sci-fi? Like for video games? I yeah. don't know. It's possible. It's possible. This stuff makes me laugh because there was this video that was going on the internet and it was a, um, before anybody asked me about hating the military, I'm in the military. <laughs> so shush. Um, so there's a sign on a bar at a hotel and it's like, we will not serve military members of their spouses. And you look at that and you'd be like, that's shitty. You serve our country. And I like that. And I'm like, I want to know that story because every time we see a sign or we have to have mm -hmm. a brief about something, somebody did the thing. Don't shit in the parking lot in the first sergeant's car. Okay. So like what happened? Cause there's a That's story. That's real specific. Yeah. Real right. specific. So with this okay. stuff, I'm like, yeah. what's the, exactly. something happen? What's the story? When what's I have to tell, when I have to tell my kids, don't drink the Germex. It's cause something happened. It's mm -hmm. because someone did that. And I have to say, don't drink the Germex. Boys Next, girls, tell my okay? soldiers it's if if you get arrested, good. don't fight the MPs. That's like that probably happens a lot. But there's just some weird mm -hmm. shit where it's just like, yeah. okay, I need you to not try to have sex with your Uber driver because <laughs> private fucking snuffy this weekend tried to fuck his Uber driver and now he's in jail. So he's an idiot. Private so I, snuffy. I wouldn't. We're know. gonna call all all fictional privates private snuffy now. Oh, that's that's their name. 
It's always private, mm -hmm. private yes. snuffy, sergeant snuffy, sergeant major snuffy. That's I'm gonna needle point that on a pillow. Oh, please, please do. Okay, make it, so make it my retirement you guys, present. You guys will enjoy the next one. Um, so you are not allowed, obviously, to get drunk at work unless it's on wine. Let's uh, go. Where do I sign up? <laughs> what are the immigration laws in Paris? <laughs> So you can't let's book a yeah. ticket now. <laughs> so you can't drink at work unless it is on wine, beer, cider, or something called hydromel. Babe, in Paris, <laughs> you can get drunk at work if it's on wine or beer. Yep. But yep. you can't get drunk, say like on but, well, they don't have any water. How else are you supposed There's to There's no water, they don't serve you water. <laughs> But we I could would, like legally drink wine at work in Paris. We gotta I would, go. I would have no friends at work. I'd be two two wine glasses in. I'm like, let me tell you what I really fucking think about you. <laughs> Come here, Stacy. Miss your face. Miss your face. Ugh. Hey, Brittany. <laughs> no, high five it. You said, oh. <laughs> let me see your face. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Hate it. Yeah. Um, okay, and then uh, you are legally allowed to marry a dead person what okay we i was so, here i was no. on board let me no let me explain okay. there are three oh. things that have to be true for you to marry a dead person you need to prove that the deceased person had the intention of marrying you very corpse bride-esque right yes um there must be serious grounds for marriage. i swear like, judge he wanted to marry me before i asked him to death with promise. my promise thank you promise. i promise he he totally Totes. wanted to Totes. So there has to be serious grounds for the marriage. So there has to be some okay. reason why it's happening. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. Um, <laughs> and then apparently the president of France must approve the marriage. So if these three things are met, you can marry a dead person. Congratulations. Does this I'm happen corpse bride. frequently? Uh, it did not specify, but I think that, you know, in like maybe if somebody was engaged to be married or something and then yeah. their very rich fiance drops dead or you know insert thing here i don't know but how convenient yeah. that very convenient a woman mm. made that rule mm -hmm. oh. a woman made that rule that was that, a law instituted by a woman 600 years ago that i was, was about like, to say back in the day back in the day protect yeah. yourself and then um, this mofo was beating my ass and he's worth a million dollars, but I can still marry him if he's dead, if he showed intent. Cool. All about Sign me up. <laughs> so this last law that's is almost my too favorite. easy. That's this this yeah, is that's my favorite one easy. of the entire list. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to butcher this pronunciation, but uh, flying saucers are not allowed to fly over the town of Chateauneuf de Pape illegal it's shit. illegal <laughs> they tried to they tried to regulate aliens they tried to regulate aliens. i thought no, americans so, were entitled so there was a story behind this one and i don't remember if it was i didn't write down all of it but it was like the mayor i think um saw something that kind of looked like a ufo and was like i don't like that and so he <laughs> just immediately made a law that was like they're not allowed to be here and then he didn't see one again so i guess the law works i guess it works. i guess it did shocker i wonder how that i guess works. they're they're law-abiding citizens uh those I'm, aliens over i'm picturing Chateau this like de Pope. i'm picturing this old white guy with just a really bad comb over in his like dirty boxer standing on his roof like get off my sky <laughs> <laughs> and they're like sir we literally don't even see you so um so that that is it for our, our french laws things that can be crimes in france and i love it um, so I have, uh, a couple, I don't know if these are cases or headlines or something in between, but we're just going to get into it. It's sort of a gumbo. We're going from a sugar nice. board to a gumbo. Um, so this is a, a headline from the year 882. My mind August, can't, I can't probably. August 5th of 882, if you will. Um, so Eight. there was a gentleman called King Louis of mm -hmm. uh, King Louis the third of West Francia and on an autumn day he glimpsed a beautiful woman that he wanted to woo and pursue 
And he decided to chase her on horseback because that's a normal way to do that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I mean, he didn't have was, a Honda. She was trying to get away. So he was trying to holler at a girl. She was like, no, thanks. Um, and then he, in his pursuit of this woman he wanted to woo, he whacked his royal skull on a door lintel and his cranium fractured and he died. <laughs> so okay. uh, if like if she's just not that into you maybe don't chase her on horseback maybe, maybe don't, don't do that maybe, maybe don't do that that's uh, not from, from 882 till now no thanks still not a good idea if she says no that's a no and then on the passenger side of his best friend's tread, tread your- <laughs> I'm, <sorry. laughs> I'm so traumatized by that song oh my god I don't uh, want no scrubs. Scrubs is a guy that can't get no love from me. Yeah, no, I cannot. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. Um, okay, so this, that was a, I mean, I don't know if that was exactly a crime, but sort of like, I don't know if it's considered a crime in the day. I think it's, I think that a was a, now. That, I think that's a crime now, but I think that that's more of a like cautionary tale, a PSA. <laughs> PSA that, we, that we've been trying to say for over a thousand years, you know, just same message so, no is a complete time. no is a complete sentence yep period nope. and stop period mine is nope <laughs> little little pe at the end my mine's ugh. <laughs> ugh. <laughs> ugh is a complete sentence mine is like oh, no did i did i tell you guys what happened at the class that i was in last week Mm-mm. so mm. i went to it's called a casualty notification slash casualty assistance officer class and it's where I go in and I learn how to tell families that their loved one has died or I'm the one that walks them like through the funeral process and like the things that they get after their loved one has died. And it's a very heavy class because they have um, actors that are reenacting actual cases and it's a family whose son committed suicide. It's a, a wife who's seven months pregnant and her husband has died. And then his grandparents that raised his daughter. And it's just, it's very, very heavy. Not a great time. But during lunch, I'd sit in the classroom by myself and I'd work on my college works because I was getting behind. And there's this, the teacher who is this, I think he said he's in his mid fifties, dude. I'm retired, military, well, whatever. So I'm sitting in there and I was just like, hey, don't lock the door. I'm going to run out, get my computer. I'm going to come back and do my schoolwork. I'm just going to hang out in here. So he's just in there talking to me and you're doing the thing when you're typing. You're like, mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. crazy. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he goes, smile, nod, smile, and nod. And so I'm in this classroom by myself. The building is empty with this dude. And he's probably about 6'2", 230. And for context, I'm 5'9 and 170. And he goes, I just, I have to tell you, you are the most beautiful, sexiest nope. woman I've had in this class in the entire time I've been teaching it. And I'm just like, no. That's a thing I know now. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, he goes in this 30 minute dialogue about how he wants to divorce his wife and he's miserable. And I'm like, bro, I'm trying to write a paper. I just need to- trying to do my schoolwork. But the class is about dealing, like staying with families in the worst moment of their, like the worst time of their lives. Like somebody you love has died. And that's what we're going through. And he's just like, actually, you're super sexy. I'm like, so- and you're super gross and creepy. Maybe we just don't compliment people. And I was like, yeah, my boyfriend also tells me I'm beautiful all the time. It's really great. And of course, Emmanuel was just like infuriated when I told him. So I was like, that was just the most creep. I was like, I thought I was past that at my level, my rank right now. It's not. Clearly, I'm not. Never. Never. Never Also, side note, I have, well, I've I've done multiple death notifications. That's a thing. And it's always, I mean, and you can prepare as much as you want to, but it's always like super unpredictable and I, it's heavy. I hope I never, I have 16 months left in the army and I hope I never get called up to do that because it sounds horrible, but that I was mean, my, that was my little segue into people are gross in any situation. People, people are gross. Well, so we are also going to, uh, speaking of unpredictable things um we are going to talk about sort of the unpredictable nature of the paris catacombs which did you go um so sort of 
it was sort of long story. Um, not exactly. Okay. Kind okay. of. However, I've been in lots of catacombs, mostly in Italy, but um, the Paris catacombs are very famous, very creepy. Mm -hmm. yep. um, a lot of skulls, a whole bunch, many, mm -hmm. many skulls. Um, and so you can go down there, like, you know, go in tours. You can, I mean, they don't let you just wander around the catacombs by yourself or so you think. Um, in the early 1990s, there was a group of people who um, they, they study and explore the Paris catacombs regularly. So it's like a sort of an interest group. They were walking through the chambers of the catacombs and they happened upon a video camera on the ground. So this is the second found video camera. It was camera. the 90s. It was it a was video camera. It was, it was the 90s. We didn't have our phones back then like we do. It was an so, actual video camera. That in actual. of itself is like an archaeological find. It's like, oh, oh. I know we found a VCR in the catacombs. Exactly. <laughs> how do we play it? How do we press start? What, how do we watch it? I don't but, know. I, okay. I'm sorry. I keep going up on tangents. How unsettling would that be if you're in a place where there's no technology and you see an old piece of technology just on the ground? Like I would leave. It's a, a little unsettling. Not like great. you see it, you see it like a, the portable CD player just on the ground in this, in the catacombs. You're like, and then we found a Walkman. <laughs> <laughs> it was a Sony. I'm gonna head out. <laughs> so, so um, they when they when they explore when they looked at it, they found that it had footage on it, and there was a man holding the video camera who clearly was lost and could not figure out how to get out of the catacombs. Oh, no. And in the video, you could see that the man was starting to go mad over a period of time in this underground network of tunnels without his ability to escape. Yeah. The video ends up ending abruptly with the man dropping the camera to the ground. And then <laughs> that was it. This is a real thing. thing. So this is a real I thing no sense of direction you don't have any kind of like markings I don't know if, or I don't know if you guys have been down to catacombs before mm -hmm. but I mean like uh -uh. it's this endless maze sometimes it goes on yeah. for miles of just just burial chambers and skeletons of just forever um and so it, it's like it's super easy to get lost there are no signs nothing there I'd, there's no yeah, I'd go I'd go mad yeah so that's creepy um yeah so they they have no idea what happened to this man who he was anything it just was a video of the last that's even of more his creepy life. oh mm -hmm. so they never oh, found him they never found him oh mm -hmm. hate it hate it yeah i don't like that so we're don't worry guys we're gonna bring it on up because baby, awesome peach jelly you, time I, I promised you that we were going to get to another segment of this charcuterie board and that there might be some sausage. So right now oh, we're going to talk about right. the, this is a real crime, the theft of Napoleon's penis. Oh, <gasps> you did say sausage. I did say sausage. You are going to bring it. And it's not Vienna sausage, it's French. <laughs> <laughs> bring so, it. After Napoleon died in 1821, his autopsy was witnessed by no less than 17 people, eight of them doctors. So it had to have been an act of extreme stealth when either, they're not sure which one, a man named Francisco Antimarchi, which was the lead doctor, or Napoleon's priest, Ange Paul Vignali. My money's on the priest. Snipped okay. off his love appendage while either conducting the autopsy or performing the last rites on the emperor's body that's not like a snip that's not like a quick thing you can just i like, mean he Ooh. was napoleon oh so, so, hang on fun it might fact, have been a snip napoleon yeah. was tall for his uh he, time and demographic he was five six he, he was five uh, six i read he was five one, seven five six one inch shorter than the average yeah but still but so he wasn't like that he was i mean and he was dead so the member is a little yeah. okay, yeah, but wait, wait know. for it, wait for it. The, the penis passed was passed to his chaplain. They were able to conduct a like a timeline, who smuggled it out of the city what and the... sold. I'm sorry, it was sold later by his family to a bookseller. 
okay, th this is what's amazing. There are a lot of booksellers and collectors in the story. So uh, I'm concerned about people who now buy and sell books, like just in general about what Valid. their uh, extracurriculars are. Yeah. So another bookseller bought it from the books from the first one. Um, at, like, I wonder if it's like, if it's like a flower press, you like into the book. <laughs> you hang it from the like, ceiling to dry. Oh, it's, like a dream, this, it's a dream. It's a dream catcher now. It's a shadow now. box. It's a shadow <laughs> it's a box. It's a dream catcher. <laughs> you know? So another bookseller bought it from the first one amongst other items in 1916 for $2,000. The pickled That's appendage at, at that point went on display at the Museum of French Art in New York. Let what? me explain how it was described by a newspaper. Oh, oh, I can't Something wait. looking like a maltreated strip of buckskin shoelace or a shriveled eel. The disrespect. <laughs> Apparently it was giggled at by onlookers. Can you imagine like Napoleon Bonaparte just in the afterlife? Like, <gasps> my girlfriend like, liked it. bigger, man. They always told me it was big. They said it was amazing. <laughs> He said that was I was the biggest it ever had. <laughs> he said it was the perfect size. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> it's not small. Every no, wait, every cisgender heterosexual man is like, I'm out. Okay. Wait for it. It was then sold to another book collector. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> and after changing hands a few more times, it was returned to the seller later and then bought by. Yes, another book collector what for $35,000. 35 grand? It sold for yes. two the okay. first time. Yeah, so two, then 35. So then after, again, getting passed from hand to hand for a, a few more times after that, I'm it now remains in the, <laughs> well, in the possession of a Miss Evan Latimer who has refused to sell it even though she's been offered up to $100,000 for Napoleon's penis. And uh, this was my own note at the end. The penis remains at large. <laughs> <laughs> or does it? Nerd. <laughs> okay, but so it doesn't remain at large because I also was looking up, there's a lot of stuff about Napoleon's penis out there. And they were able to um, like guesstimate, like, you know, using all sorts of scientific measurements, how, mm -hmm. how big it actually was. And it looks like he was uh, gunning at 1.5 inches. Shut up yes so he Wait. needed to conquer some stuff y'all that's what he needed to do maybe that's, that's my... what the napoleon complex really means 1.5 because he inches? wasn't short not here nope. somewhere else okay that's... so that that is the tail of napoleon's front tail <laughs> <laughs> well done I well, uh, there. and i do have i good. do have one last story Okay. which is just something that I found really interesting. And you all may or may not know the story. Um, but this, uh, I had started reading an article and I just loved, um, I loved the title of it. And so I kept it for my segment, which is how a dead girl in Paris ended up with the most kissed lips in history. <gasps> I can do this. I don't know. So, it, sounds, it sounds gross. I know this. It's cool. It's, I think, so, it, you know, I think what it is, it's really cool. Okay. So there was this is, this is um, a young girl that was pulled from the Seine, which is the river that is in Paris. And it looked like it was likely suicide due to no signs of struggle. As she was pulled out, she was put on display for potential identifications as drowned people in the Seine often were. She was never identified, but when they looked at her, apparently, so the story goes, the attendant at the mortuary was so transfixed by her that he ordered a plaster cast to be made of her face. Sure did. She, even in her death, she had a very serene appearance and people couldn't believe how well preserved she was. In fact, the plaster cast and the woman herself started to be called the drowned Mona Lisa. The, and this is known in France as Le Enconnui, 
and I'm going to probably say that incorrectly, but it's um, Le Enconui de la Seine, the unknown woman of the Seine. And Le Enconui turned it into kind of a morbid meme for early 20th century writers um, who they, they created all of these dramatic histories and stories based off of who she could have been and what her life might have been like, engulfed by ill fortune Mm -hmm. and the weight of water. And she, in fact, was described as the erotic ideal of the period and Mm -hmm. was the aesthetic template for a whole generation of women who modeled their looks on her. Mm -hmm. Um, One of the, the people who had been transfixed by her looks from an early age was a man named Asmund Lairdal, who was a toy maker who was known for manufacturing the world's first plastic doll. Mm -hmm. Uh, One day, Lairdal's two-year-old son, Tor, nearly drowned, and his father rushed to intervene, um, making sure that he pulled him from the water, forcing the air out of, forcing the water out of his lungs. And, but he nearly lost his son. So it was a very traumatic experience for the family. There was a group of anesthesiologists who had approached Slayer doll years later and told him that they needed a doll to demonstrate a newly developed resuscitation technique, a procedure known as CPR. And they found a very attentive listener who had grown up seeing a mask of Lee Econwi the unknown woman of the scene at his parents' house and decided to make a life-size mannequin based off of the drowned Mona Lisa. Mm -hmm. Kind of a creepy side note, he felt it was important that the mannequin should be a female, suspecting that men in the 1960s would be reluctant to practice CPR on a male doll's lips. You know he wasn't wrong. He He wasn't, wasn't, but also gross. Um, So... Uh, She was later known as Resuscitation Annie. Yep. And she is the reason that CPR is so widely known. She's not the only model that was ever made. She wasn't the only CPR doll. Um, But this this resuscitation doll that has taught countless people to save lives is based off of the drowned Mona Lisa, this unknown woman that was found in Paris. It's a, it's a wild story. It's, I'm so glad you, I'm so glad you covered that. I, that was like in the back of my brain somewhere and you just like, you resuscitated it. That was, it's such a cool story. resuscitated the story. You You resuscitated the story. Um, so also weird side note, the lyric, Annie, are you okay? From Smooth Criminal actually Mm -hmm. stems from the CPR training because students are supposed to ask that to the dolls. Okay, well, does that go back to Michael Jackson? Because he was before Smooth yeah. Uh, Alien. Yeah. Yeah, so that goes, okay, mm-hmm. that's cool. Michael Jackson. That is so, so wild. Um, so anyway, yes, so this drowned woman has saved other countless drowned, potentially drowned people. Oh, wow. That's very prophetic. That's like- It's so cool. It's really cool. I had no idea. Yeah. When you um, brought that up, I th- it was just like, it, like it clicked. That was so cool. I, uh, I also was hoping to have this personal story. So as I was walking around Paris, I'm just, I'm walking through this one alley and I have a picture of it. So I'm going to send it to you, but, um, I found a bloody handprint on a wall. Nope. Yep. Nope. I saw that. Uh, mm-hmm. Um, didn't, didn't know what that was. Uh, tried to figure it out based off of street name and everything. Nope. Just random bloody handprint um so that is an unsolved uh, case to round out our charcuterie board <laughs> i love but, it i love it you but, brought uh, the board tonight man you did but that, that is cool. that is the end of our uh our smorgasbord of european crimes uh and more so i i know that i need to buy a ticket for my snail next time i'm in france <laughs> buy a ticket for your snail yeah and uh you know don't don't forget the sausage. It might be worth a hundred thousand dollars one day. One it's a book half press. Inch. All the book presses. It's just it's like a penis press. It's just. Well, I was thinking. So- I was like, how would you press? How would you do that? And you said one and a half inches. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. I see. I see. I see. I see. Oh, that's <laughs> look. Look that's at how. you. <laughs> look at you. Oh, you it's like your- a bookmark. <laughs> you did your it's, like a, it's like a bookmark. <laughs> you, know, you put a little condom I- on it, and it's like it hangs over. Like, yeah, just a little. I have this uh, misogynistic guy in my friends group that I tolerate because I like all the other people. 
And he's telling like, oh, jokes about women. And my favorite comeback is you won't be able to see this if you're not on YouTube, but I'm like, why are women terrible at parallel parking? And they're like, why? I'm like, cause you guys keep saying that this is six inches. <laughs> um, shut down. Love it. All right. Well, Love it. that'll wrap this up for our, that's it. That's it. it. That's our, hope season. you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed all of the flavors and the variety of the Dutch and French. Uh, hope you board. hope you're uncomfortable by the uh, the toe licking, which I'm going to oh, do quick socks on mm-hmm. right now. Oh, but new fear unlocked. New fear unlocked. New achievement unlocked. But okay. thanks. Well, thanks thank for you listening. for listening. Yes, and we'll see you Bye, guys everybody. next time with an exciting, exciting stories. Bye, everyone. We love Um, you. Love you. Bye. Love you.